Want to see how we turn an ordinary Tanyo cover into a pop-up camper? Stay tuned. All right, what's going on everybody? So for those of you just joining us, we're gonna be turning this Dodge Dakota into an Overlander. We have an expo coming up, the Southeast Overland Expo that we plan on attending, and this truck still has a little bit of ways to go. So in our last few episodes, we went, we removed the Tanyo cover, we replaced the seals, we painted some spots, added a little bit of rust on it, and gave it an overall refresh. We lined it all right now, it's working pretty well. And then in a previous episode as well, we removed the rough plastic bed liner and replaced it with this nice carpet kit by Bedrug. Now that we got the basics down and we have a good soft floor and a nice hard roof, it's time to fill in the gaps. <laughs> and by that, I mean this big opening right here. For those of you that haven't seen the previous episodes, we're turning the back of this into basically a pop-up tent. So that when this Tanyo cover lifts up, it's gonna take with it a little bit of tent material, fill out these walls, we're gonna have a nice door right here, and it's gonna extend out forward onto the tailgate. Now to do this, you could go and take a whole bunch of measurements, have a custom tent made, but that's gonna cost you so much money. So I actually went on Amazon. After taking a little bit of measurements as far as the width that I need, I looked something up, found something similar, and I was able to pick this up. This I think ran me just like 60 bucks on Amazon wasn't too bad and it looks like a really great tent but i'm actually going to be cutting it up i'm going to be cutting out the main door section and i'm going to be trying to leave myself with enough material trailing off of that to cover up these little side portions so that's the plan time put into action let's open this thing up and let's start cutting gotta say i'm pretty impressed this tent bag is way oversized even comes with some extra straps to buckle across to cinch it down to keep it nice and tight and the tent itself too is pretty light. You can kind of see that's the general shape of it. We have this big open door here and that should be more than adequate for what we need. It's funny, I was actually going to Walmart and I was opening up the tents inside the camping section and looking at them. I guess that's our rain fly. Yeah, those are our poles. I was actually opening them up in Walmart to check them out because I had to make sure certain parts were in the right place and sadly I wasn't seeing anything I was going to actually be able to use. All right, let's see what we got here. So right off the bat, looks like we got our front right here. Definitely first step is going to be trying to figure out where your front is. Something you want to look for is, especially on this one, this is the inside and you're able to unzip the privacy screen leaving just the mesh. For some reason, on a lot of the cheaper tents, the privacy screen was actually on the outside of the mesh. Which, to be honest, that, that doesn't sound very private at all. So definitely keep an eye out if you're doing this back at home, because the last thing you want is to spend your money on our tent, be relying on it for a project, and then figure out it's not gonna work for you. So now we found our opening, we're gonna go, we're gonna close this up, just so we can really see what we're working with. And again, the main thing we're working on right now is we want to make sure that the door is nice and centered. The door kind of decides everything for you as far as where you need to make your cuts, where you might have to add fabric, because the most important thing is that you're able to get in and out without any form of inconvenience. If the door is like a foot up off the tailgate, that's going to be super annoying and it's going to be very awkward just climbing in and out every single time. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to grab the base of it and throw half of it up and over. What I want to basically replicate is if I had the top of the door right here, where that's going to set the other two corners. Alright, so now that we got this draped over the Tanyo cover, we're able to situate where we want the bottom two corners to be, as well as how we want our door to be orientated inside of the opening. It looks like one of the easier things we can do is if we were to cut the bottom out of this, or at least cut open the backside so we're able to slip this around the truck like a glove, because even though we're gonna be mounting it inside of the Tanyo cover, so we'll be able to tuck it inside, close it up, and drive away, it's going to give us a lot better representation of what we're working with if we allow it to fit itself on the truck like it would if it was hard mounted. So, <laughs> I guess that means I have to cut up my brand new tent. <laughs> I sure hope this works because this is my only sleeping arrangement for this trip. So if this doesn't work, then 
I guess I have to go buy a new tent. <laughs> All right, let's get the Gundy. So what I'm actually gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be cutting long ways on the back side, and then go halfway down the middle. That way, if I need any extra fabric in a certain spot, I have a little bit to play with. <laughs> okay, first cut. Oh, that felt so wrong. For those of you wondering, yes, I'm using tin snips. Why? I don't really know. over the truck and it's going to be able to drape down naturally and we'll be able to figure out where we need to tuck and where we need to secure it in order to get the look that we're going for. So let's see, should just be able to just toss it over the top now. We got the basic idea for where we want our door to be. Um, noticing our door is slightly bigger than the space that we have as far as height wise goes. I don't think it should be too much of an issue. Again, I'm still figuring out a couple things like how I want to mount it down at the bottom. I want to keep both the latch mechanisms available so I'm able to just open it and close it without having to have it get caught in any of the hooks for when the tonneau cover is latching down to the tailgate. But for right now, let's continue mocking it up. Let's get the sides tucked in and let's just continue with uh, figuring it out as we go. So all this right here, we definitely want right around right here is the bedside and it wouldn't be bad keeping the screen up. So we're just gonna tuck this back just to show what it would look like if we had it properly mounted the way we want. Very cool, and then we have something like this going on down here. And this would be secured. Very, very cool. Tuck all that in there. As little material here as possible. So I don't know if I mentioned it, but the way I'm going to be securing this onto the tiny cover in the bed is I'm going to be using some adhesive Velcro. So I'm basically going to be lining the Velcro on the inside channel right here on the tiny cover, and then the outside channel right here on the frame. So the material will be able to stick to that, and then when I lower it down, it'll keep it shut. All the material will be inside the bed. I lift it up, and it'll be right here. So then any rain will drip off the tonneau cover. Any rain that gets on the tent will come right to the bedside, and then just flow down versus building up in this void over here. All right, guys, so quick update. I've been messing around with the material a little bit, seeing different ways I want to secure it, where exactly I want it to be attached. And I think I found some pretty good solutions that isn't going to overcomplicate setup and is still going to make it a very convenient setup as well. So touch and base again, we got it draped over and we have it so the opening is our main front wall. Now I was able to get the corners over here and I noticed they still had the ground pins on. Them. So I think I found a pretty good solution on how we can add a little bit of tension on the front bit going across the tailgate. So it's a little dark, but right here I have the pin for the corner of the tent and I have that just clamped on to my bumper bracket. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drill a small hole so I'll be able to pull out the bottom of the tent and then grab the two corners and sink each pin into their designated hole. Having those pins hold tension on the bottom of the tent should give us a pretty secure mounting point for the bottom of our setup. So by using the pins in the bottom of the tent, that's going to allow me to keep the bottom portion of the tent tucked inside of the bed. So when I drop down the tailgate, I'll grab those two pins, clip it into the bottom, grab the other one, clip it into the bottom, and then the whole bottom part will be under tension and the tent will take its full shape. This idea also solved an issue we were having with the latching mechanism. For the tonneau cover to stay down, there's a latch on the top of the tonneau cover that hooks onto here when it's in the closed position. Now this hook becomes a concern when we're talking about securing the top of the tent onto the inner edge of this tonneau cover. 
I was able to solve this problem by simply just noticing that if I keep the top portion of this unzipped, I'll be able to always have access onto this latch. So when it's in the closed position, I'll also be able to make sure that this hook is free and safe, and then I'll always be able to lock it down without having to worry about cutting my material. All right, guys. So the next step now that we have the bottom secured is working on the top. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your time and figure out where you want your door to be. If it's a small door, figure out which side you want it to be on. Otherwise, if you're like me, just do your best to make it centered. And now that we know we have it centered, we're gonna take our adhesive Velcro. And what I'm actually gonna do, this might be different for your application, but I have a very thick rubber seal that goes between the tiny cover and the tailgate. I'm actually going to be putting my Velcro underneath that seal. And then I'm gonna have my tent go underneath that seal as well and Velcro right on. So that way we have the tent as far forward in the tonneau cover as possible while still hiding any seams that we might have and making the tent look seamlessly bonded onto the tonneau cover. Now what I was saying before was our door is a little bit too big for the distance between our tonneau cover and our tailgate. So I know that even though I have this nice tension down here on the bottom, I'm gonna have to adjust that a little bit to lower the bottom of the door down. And now that's gonna be fine because worst case scenario, having the bottom of the door be at the bottom of the tailgate or even a little bit lower is going to be much better than having the top of our door have to get completely cut off and not be able to open it up the full way. So what I'm gonna be doing is with this Velcro, I'm gonna be adhering it about, maybe about an inch above the actual door. You want enough room for play and to work with it, however, if I stick it too high, then we're gonna to have to make a lot of adjustments down here on the bottom. Now I am gonna be mounting the adhesive on the inside of the tent going under that seal, because that will give us a nice seamless look of the tent just coming out from underneath the tonneau cover. Something I've already figured out is, it's gonna be better to use the soft part of the Velcro on the tent and the harder hook side on the actual truck. That because the harder side's going to take better to being pressure washed, washing dirt out of all the stuff that it might be exposed to when the tent is not inside and I'm going out doing some mudding or whatever I might be doing. Whereas this kind of material will stand up a lot better in a washer and letting it dry out in the sun. So we're going to be using the softer loop side for any time that we're sticking it onto the tent. So now that we know where we want to, so now that we have our, our corners squared off and we know what our plan is, so now we have our corners squared off, our door centered, and we know what we're doing. It's time to finally start laying down some Velcro. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it note of where our corner is. And remember that we want to stay about an inch and a half or two inches up. That's gonna be different for everyone's application, but that seems like it's gonna be best for mine. And we're gonna flip this off and we're gonna start laying a long strip of Velcro that is going to be long enough to go from one corner of the tiny cover all the way to the other staying parallel with this seam going straight across to the other side. So now this might look a little bit confusing because I essentially turned it inside out, but we still have everything we were looking at before. Here's the mesh portion. Here is the triangle that is also the center of our tent. And here's the top part of our door. We're now gonna take this Velcro and we're gonna measure it out to be about the same length of the tonneau cover. We're gonna get the strip and we're gonna run it about an inch and a half, two inches or so away from that zipper. And we're gonna run that for the entire length of the tonneau cover. In this kind of situation, always do a little bit more because in the end you are gonna cut everything to fit anyway. All right, so pro tip, you can fold the Velcro in half and line that up with your midway mark that will enable you to make sure that you have just as much on the left side as do the right side. Again, I added a couple extra inches on just to make sure we have enough material to work with. Now, I know we have to stay parallel with this zipper, so I'm keeping that in mind when I'm straightening out our material and I'm running it across. All right, no turning back now. And I really mean no turning back. This Velcro adhesive has some crazy strength to it. I thought this stuff was gonna be cheap and it really has shown its strength. I'll definitely leave a link in the description below for everything that I'm using in this video. Also guys, while you're watching this video, 
definitely consider subscribing. We're always doing stuff like this. I definitely love these kind of projects. I love talking to you guys. And if you guys ever have any questions about them yourselves, just drop a comment down below. I love to answer. I love to help, especially if, if, if I see someone following this video along and they're doing this for their own truck. That, that would be so cool to see. It's time for us to lay down the hook side. Now, we've already established that we want to stay inside all the weather sealing on the Tanyo cover. That way, not only will it look cleaner, but it will also keep our tents out of the elements, out of the rain and dust, so that way when we're setting up camp, it's not a bunch of dust and stuff flying all over the place getting into all our sleeping gear. So with that being said, it's time to take the hook side of our Velcro and start taping down the perimeter for where we want our tent to mount onto. So what I'm doing here is I'm just giving this a quick wipe down just to make sure there's no dirt or grime that's going to get in the way of our adhesion when we're applying on this Velcro. Awesome. All this looks very, very clean. So it should be a pretty good surface to adhere to. Again, start by just peeling off a small portion at a time and then working it all down as you go. There's no need to go and peel off the entire thing and then you're going to have the material stick to itself or possibly your tent and that would just be an entire nightmare. Pro tip this sort of stuff, line the velcro up in a nice straight line and you can even have a hand kind of far away but if you're giving it tension then you're able to go and grab arms the plastic backing and just gradually pull that out from underneath your material. That's gonna allow you to keep a straight, common line and gradually adhere it as you go. That way you have you know, your final goal in sight, but you're still managing it bit by bit in order to not overwhelm yourself and have it all just turn into a mess. Our velcro matches up with that velcro and resecure it down to the bottom to see what we're working with. That should square it away. We should be able to make the proper adjustments down on the bottom, and then we're gonna be able to go ahead and start working on our sides. It's gonna be a little complicated because we stuck the velcro onto the inside of the tent. Now that makes sense because from our perspective, the wall is gonna go up and it's gonna hook in onto the velcro underneath our weather trim. However, from this perspective, we're going to have to kind of have the material we're not using folded out because we don't want to cut it just yet in case we end up having to make any form of alterations. should give us a pretty good idea of how our door is going to be situated. Nice. So yeah, this is all perfect. Here, let me show you what we did. So now by giving us a couple extra rooms on top of the zipper, that put our door right here, just a few inches underneath where the top of the Tanyo cover is. 
that looks really really good it looks nice and squared and stepping back you can really see it begin to take some shape you got the door coming out over there to the side and i think this is really going to work out well so now that we're happy with the way our top is mounted we're going to go we're going to mock the bottom part back up again to see how that's situated if everything works out well we're going to finalize the mounts down there at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and start working on the side panels <coughs> It's as symmetrical as possible just to make sure that we're gonna end up with the same result on both sides all right so we got this pretty much situated i'm gonna cut off this top piece of material and then we're gonna go start shaping in the walls Alright, so update. I made a little bit of progress. Let me show you guys what I got going on. Alright, so still got the whole door squared away. We got it attached up top and we have it adjustable down the bottom. So now over here on the side is where we made our improvements. It's kind of hard to tell because it's a little bit little dark out being that it is 2.15 in the morning right now. But anyway, we got the bottom all attached onto the frame same thing up here up on the top we got all that attached and trimmed it looks really really good i'm very happy with how this side came out over here i realized just the tension from the clamp down the bottom is actually enough to get a pretty good seal over here on the side originally i was planning on putting some more velcro over by where the tailgate attaches but it seems like this is going to be pretty sufficient if it needs anything else i'll be able to add that as we go so now all that's left is doing the same thing <laughs> over here. Should be pretty quick now that I know what I'm doing. It definitely seems like the trick is to start up on the top and work your way down. That way you have everything straight up here and it drapes down accordingly. sitting pretty good now we're gonna get our velcro I've been sticking the two pieces together and then applying it to where we want that makes it nice and easy everything is lined up and then when we peel off the other side of the adhesive we're then able to get the tent and apply it into the appropriate spot so now that we got our velcro down and the microwaves land now we're gonna grab our material we're going to drape it over the side. What this does is this helps us keep everything nice and straight, make sure we're going to be able to keep our material nice and tight. You don't want it to be too tight, but you want it to be able to be a little bit more snug. Otherwise, any flapping, that's all going to be noise that could be waking you up. All right, so now that we got our material lined up the way we like it, and we have all the tension set the way that we would when we're using it, we're going to go ahead and peel off the adhesive on that back side, and we're going to start sticking it onto the frame. Now again, you don't want to have a crazy amount of tension because especially up here, it is just holding on to net and if you put too much tension on it, it's going to start peeling off and you don't want that to start happening. Again, just going inch by inch, just working its way down. So quick tip again, while applying this portion of the tent, I was having a bunch of difficulty with the tent pulling to the side and I was beginning to form some weird wrinkles that I wasn't okay with. So I realized it was because there's some form of tension pulling this part over to that way. So I went real quick, just with the razor blade, just cut right down the middle. Again, you don't wanna mess up your paint, but just pull it away and slice down. Now I'm able to manipulate the material however I want and I'm able to continue with the project. All right, and then that's it. Once you trim all that stuff away, you should have a nice clean edge. I had a little bit of something weird going on over here. I was having a lot of material just building up and not laying nicely. I ended up just stuffing some of the wrinkles up into the side. Shouldn't be an issue, you can't even tell. Um, cleaned all this away and all the extra I had draped off of here because I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. 
I actually ended up just tucking it into the side. That's all going to help insulate the side over here as well as keep it nice and sealed. But I am exhausted. It is 3 o'clock in the morning. I have work in <laughs> 4 hours. So I think it's time to call it a day. Taking a step back, I'm definitely digging how this looks. I think this is really going to be a sick setup. It's definitely going to be interesting changing things up and making improvements on this kind of idea moving forward. I already know a couple spots I'd want to make some changes if I knew more going into this, but that's all part of it. I'm definitely excited to test this out and find any shortcomings that I might have and see how it does overall. As far as rain goes, I'm just going to keep the Rainfly Army. I should be able to drape that over the top and use it like it was intended. The elastic strap should fit down to the bumper and the wheel well, and it should be more than adequate for any rain that I might get caught in. All right, so before we close out the video, let's collapse this thing and put it away and just make sure that everything still works all right. All right, so first step would be releasing the tension down here on the bottom. Bring that corner in. Same thing on the other side. And bring that corner in. Tuck in all the extra material. All right. And this should be fine. Should be too much material coming out. If so, yep. It will just stick your arm over there. And just put it in. All right, there you go, and it's closed. Nice, no material sticking out on either side. This looks pretty good. And just like that, it's back to looking like a normal truck. I'll have to time it to figure out exactly how fast I can do this, but that's pretty quick, especially compared to a rooftop tent or anything else in the same kind of category. All right, guys, well, it is three o'clock in the morning. I'm exhausted, I have work in the morning. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do this yourselves, please let me know. Comment down below. Add your Instagram, whatever. I would love to go and check it out. All right, but that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to get out there. Like, comment, subscribe. It helps young channels out like mine. If you guys like what you saw today, let me know down in the comments down below. But that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you out there.